Welcome to my 2016 NBA free agency predictions. So as we all know, NBA teams can begin to talk and negotiate with free agents starting on July 1st, so pretty much in a few hours from this video being uploaded. You're going to see that there will be some unexpected moves happening throughout this free agency, with the salary cap rising from $70 million to $94 million, far more teams than normal will have the cash space to play with, making this summer's free agency frenzy one of the hardest to predict. But I'm going to do my best to predict where I think certain players will end up, and before you guys roast me in the comment section, I'm only human, I'm only going to predict one team that I think that these players will end up going to, so definitely comment down below your thoughts or where you think certain players will end up, because like I said, I'm one, I'm one person, I have one mind, and I can only predict where I think players will end up, but obviously there's 30 teams in the NBA, they can only choose one team, so don't blame me if I'm wrong. Anyway, before I get started, I'd appreciate if you guys could drop a like on the video, just to show your support, but here are my predictions for this year's NBA Top unrestricted so yeah we're not going to be talking about restricted free agents uh, but yeah NBA top unrestricted free agents and this is in no order but starting at number one Kevin Durant Kevin Durant is the ultimate prize of the summer of 2016 along with obviously LeBron James but I think we all know that LeBron is going to re-sign with the Cleveland Cavaliers so yeah Kevin Durant is the ultimate prize this year he was the 2014 NBA MVP and plenty of teams have their eyes set on targeting this year's free agent star. He has meetings with the Warriors, the Spurs, the Heat, the Clippers, the Celtics, and of course, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Of those teams, however, the three that appear to have the best shot at getting Durant, I think, in my opinion, are the Warriors, the Thunder, and the Miami Heat. Let's start with the least likely, the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat president, Pat Riley, one of the greatest GMs of all time, has obviously in the past been able to get some pretty crazy talent to Miami. He got Shaq, he's got LeBron, and he's obviously got Chris Bosh. But now he's trying to get Kevin Durant. The only problem for the Miami Heat is that Dwayne Wade, while still playing at an all-star level, is 34 years old. And Chris Bosh, we don't even know if he's going to return to being the Chris Bosh that we know. We don't even know if he's going to play next year. So... He's had some serious health problems over the last two seasons with blood clots. Pat Riley might be a basketball genius and a master of persuasion, but selling Durant on Miami is harder than it looks. All indications are that Durant's decision will come down to the Warriors or the Thunder. I don't see him going to Miami. If the Warriors are able to move either Andre Iguodala or Andrew Bogut, they'll have the cap space to sign Durant. It's crazy to think that since, I mean, they won the championship in 2015, they made it this year to the NBA Finals and... Steph Curry, the MVP, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, they're not even on big contracts at all. In fact, Steph Curry is pretty crazily underpaid. Is that even a word? I don't know. Let's roll with it. The opportunity to play alongside Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green, and compete for championships year after year, might be pretty enticing for Durant. But in my opinion, I just don't see Durant being the type of player to go to a team that he was so close to beating in the Western Conference Finals. That team would be incredible though. The fact that Kevin Durant could be willing to leave OKC for a team he came within one game of defeating in the Western Conference Finals, I just personally can't see that happening. Above all else, you have to imagine that Kevin Durant just wants to win, especially wanting to win by leading a team, not playing behind Steph Curry. In the end, however, coming up just one game short of the NBA Finals, still having Russell Westbrook as his teammate, and the acquisition of Victor Oladipo, obviously losing Serge Ibaka, and the rise of players like Steven Adams and Andre Roberson, should be enough to persuade Durant to come home for at least one more shot this year. And my prediction is that Durant re-signs with the Thunder just for one more year to see how he plays with Victor Oladipo and the rest of the crew but I reckon it will only be for a one-year max contract, and then we'll see what happens in 2017. Number 2, DeMar DeRozan. Although the Raptors shooting guard, DeMar DeRozan, has stated on multiple occasions that he plans on staying in Toronto, and he hasn't even organized any meetings with any other teams, there are still some whispers here and there that the two-time All-Star could end up in LA. DeRozan, who turns 27 in August, is from LA, and he actually played college ball at USC. Both the Lakers and the Clippers would certainly be interested in signing DeMar DeRozan if he were to make it clear that he truly wanted to leave Toronto, which maybe he will in a few years, you never know. The problem is, as of right now, DeRozan only has one meeting planned, and that's with the Raptors. All signs point to DeRozan re-upping for the max contract with Toronto, and I just don't see him going anywhere, especially not this season. So, my prediction is that DeMar DeRozan re-signs with the Raptors. Number 3, 
Mike Conley. Finally, we have a free agent that probably won't sign with his former team. Conley is an all-star level floor general that is easily at the top of his position on the market. The Spurs and the Dallas Mavericks though, they appear to be Conley's two most likely destinations at the moment. For the Spurs, they sell a pretty good pitch. Come play alongside Kawhi Leonard and LaMarcus Aldridge and learn from one of the great point guards in Tony Parker. Compete for a championship in San Antonio for years to come. If the Spurs management can open up enough cash space, it might be enough to sway the 28 year old to San Antonio. A team like San Antonio that doesn't normally get free agents to get LaMarcus Aldridge one year and then Mike Conley the next year, that would be pretty crazy for the San Antonio Spurs. That being said, the Dallas Mavericks should be considered the favourites to sign Mike Conley. Mavs owner Mark Cuban has been desperate to sign a high profile free agent for years and after losing out last summer on DeAndre Jordan, you can be assured that the Mavs will be pushing the hardest for Conley services. Conley is exactly the type of point guard head coach Rick Carlisle loves and not to mention they have cat space so Mike Conley signs with the Dallas Mavericks for the max contract that would be crazy and that's my prediction. Number 4 Al Horford Trying to figure out where the former Hawks center Al Horford is going to land this summer is a difficult puzzle to solve. The four-time All-Star could very well re-sign in Atlanta, but it's hard to imagine that the Hawks would be willing to shell out a max contract to a player who is about to turn 31 years old. Not to mention they just lost Jeff Teague, and Jeff Teague was a pretty vital part to what the Atlanta Hawks were doing this season, so does Al Horford want to come back without Jeff Teague? I don't know about that. The Lakers, the Celtics, the Magic, the Pistons, the Rockets and Heat are all rumoured to be interested in the centre, but as of now, there doesn't appear to be a clear front runner. Of all these teams, the Celtics seem the most desperate to sign a star, and Al Horford would fit nicely in the Boston lineup at the 5 spot. I could also see him joining the Miami Heat if Whiteside leaves Miami for a max contract somewhere else, but as we're talking about Horford, I think that if the Celtics offer Horford a max contract, I don't see Horford not taking that deal. and. They should be able to bring him to Beantown, so my prediction is that Al Horford signs with the Celtics on a max contract, and if they don't, Miami should make a huge push to sign Al Horford, especially if they lose to Sam Whiteside. Number 5, Dwayne Wade. He might be an unrestricted free agent, but it would be shocking if Dwayne Wade chose not to stay in South Beach. Maybe I'm a little bit biased towards Dwayne Wade, but I can't see him playing for any other organization. He's one of those players like Tim Duncan, Dirk Nowitzki. He's just a player that doesn't seem like he could play for another organization. Now, I guess if he doesn't like the way that Miami's running, he might leave. But what's really scaring me is that the latest news from Dwayne Wade is that he is prepared to explore offers from other teams after an agreement has failed to be reached with the Miami Heat. Wade has been with the Heat his whole career, so my prediction is Dwayne Wade does re-sign with the Miami Heat. Number 6, Hassan Whiteside. The Heat have stated that they want to keep the NBA's leading shot blocker from a year ago, but re-signing the 27-year-old, 27-year-old, let me say that again, 27-year-old doesn't appear to be in the team's top priorities. Nobody really thinks about this, but he's not a young player by any means. I mean, he's not old, but he's not a rookie either. He's only been in the league for a few seasons, so he's still learning. Throw in the fact that Whiteside clashed at times last season with head coach Eric Spolstra and all the signs point to Whiteside leaving Miami, especially since Miami throughout the season didn't even start him for a lot of the games. I like to think that I'm one of the bigger Heat fans and I pretty much watch all the Heat games, so to see that he wasn't starting at times, like Amari would start over Hassan Whiteside, it seemed to me like he didn't really love it in Miami, especially coming off the bench. Whiteside himself didn't really love coming off the bench, if I had to say so myself. So I think the Lakers, the Celtics, the Mavericks and the Trailblazers are probably the front runners to sign Hassan Whiteside, especially if they could sign him on a max contract. All those teams are obviously interested in signing Hassan Whiteside, but it would be the purple and gold that seemed to have the inside track on acquiring the center. The Lakers have reportedly made Whiteside their number one target, and with a massive hole at their center position, Whiteside would fit that seamlessly in LA. A max contract offer should land the Lakers a Whiteside signature. If the Lakers can't get Whiteside, I wouldn't be surprised if the Trailblazers also make a very strong push to get Whiteside. Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, and now Hassan Whiteside, that would be a nice three-way team. I would love him to stay in Miami of course, but I don't think it will happen. Anyway, but my prediction is that Whiteside signs with the LA Lakers on a max contract. Number 7, Dwight Howard. 
Howard is one of the wild cards in this year's free agency. I honestly have no idea where he's going to end up. With his injury history and his mixed reviews of Dwight Howard as a teammate, he's a pretty risky proposition. Look for the team that signs him to give him a max contract, but on a one or two year deal to minimize the risk that if he doesn't work out. The Boston Celtics and the Atlanta Hawks have emerged as the top two teams that will try and recruit the 30-year-old big man. Howard declined his $23.2 million player option he had for next season with the Houston Rockets, giving him the chance to sign a longer-term deal as the salary cap rises to more than $90 million. According to the report, the Miami Heat have not yet scheduled a meeting with the eight-time All-Star, but could make a strong run at Dwight Howard. My prediction is that Dwight Howard signs with either the Hawks or the Heat. The Hawks have recently lost Jeff Teague to the Pacers though, so I don't know if that will have a huge impact on Dwight's decision, but if it does, the Celtics are another team that needs a big man, but I just don't see Dwight Howard fitting in their system, so they're better off going after someone like Al Horford, in my opinion. So probably the Heat is my prediction for Dwight Howard. Number 8, Nicholas Batum. Outside of Kevin Durant, Batum is the next best small forward on the open market and will have no shortage of contract offers. The Hornets would love to re-sign the French-born wing player, but the general feeling across the NBA is Batum will leave Charlotte. The Rockets, Wizards, Knicks, Lakers and Warriors are in the running for Batum. It's hard to say if any of those teams can be called a favourite to sign the 27-year-old. The Wizards who are desperate to sign a forward seem to be the most likely to offer Batum a max contract. But if the Warriors miss out on Kevin Durant and they don't re-sign Harrison Barnes, a cross-country move to the Bay Area wouldn't seem that bad for Nicholas Batum. Much will change in the coming days of free agency, but I don't see Nicholas Batum signing immediately to a team. But for now, we'll just follow the money. My prediction is that Nicholas Batum either signs with the Washington Wizards on a max contract, or he joins the New York Knicks at the shooting guard position, but I don't know if he'd love playing at the two. We shall see what happens though. Other mentions, obviously LeBron James, but I don't see him going anyway, especially not after winning a championship in Cleveland. I don't see Dirk leaving, he's one of those players that just I don't see ever leaving Dallas Mavericks. I think Harrison Barnes will probably chase the money. I think he'd rather chase the money and earn a little bit of cash rather than playing with the Golden State Warriors and trying to win a championship. That's just my prediction. And I think the New York Knicks will strongly overpay Joe Kim Noah for a pretty big contract. Probably over 16 to 18 million dollars, which, yeah, I don't know if he's really worth that. Simply because they're the Knicks and Derrick Rose wants him in New York with him. If there are any other free agents that you think we should have a conversation about and a discussion on, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I want to have a huge discussion during this year's free agency, so keep coming back to this video just to talk about your thoughts on the NBA free agency of 2016. Also let me know where you think the top free agents will go, like Durant, Whiteside, Dwayne Wade, Al Horford, etc. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please, if you're new around here, I make a whole bunch of NBA videos, what ifs, 2K content, so definitely subscribe for more and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. I'd really, really appreciate it if you guys could drop a like on the video. Anyway, I'm out. Peace.